welcome to episode 57 of Board Game Blitz, a proud member of the Dice Tower Network and a podcast about all things board games that you can listen to in less time than it takes to get over the unending sadness you feel after leaving your friends at a board game convention. Board Game Blitz is sponsored by Gray Fox Games. This week, we're talking all about our experience at Dice Tower Con, including some of the games we played and some of the other shenanigans we got into. So if you're not interested in hearing about our con experience, this episode might not be your favorite. But now, here are your hosts, Ambie and Crystal. We recently had a contest, and it is over now, but the winner is Mike Risley from Woo-hoo! Twitter. One of the games he likes that was on uh, Crystal's top 100 list is Near and Far. And he just got a copy of Amber Mines, which he tweeted to us. So that's cool. And Mike is a friend of the show, so we were really happy when the random number generator pulled his name out of the hat. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations, Mike. Yes. And we have one other announcement, which some of you or a lot of you hopefully might already be aware of. During Dice Tower Con, there was a live episode of Board Game Breakfast. And during that episode, Tom made a pretty big announcement that Ambi and I are now part of the core video content team for the Dice Tower. Yay! Yay! which is really exciting. And it's a yeah. secret that we've been sitting on for at least a couple of months yeah, a couple now. Months, I think. <laughs> and I am not a good secret keeper. So I it was, it was kind of slowly killing me inside to not be able to tell everybody, <laughs> but we're very excited. Uh, basically what this means uh, for any of you who watch our YouTube channel is almost all of the video content we produce going forward is going to be on the Dice Towers YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Um, Most of the video content will be pushed out through there, but there are no changes coming for the podcast. We still own the podcast and nothing is changing here. So if you are just a person who listens to the podcast, this change means absolutely nothing for you, which I imagine is a good thing, I hope. (laughs) But yeah, if you do watch our video content and you notice less stuff coming through our YouTube channel, that's why because it's going to be over on the dice tower which we're really excited about yeah and we're going to be making more content too we're starting up new series crystal's doing a game show which yeah we we i I, i'm hesitant to discuss the details of the game (laughs) show only because it's kind of a big deal and i want to make sure it gets announced properly Mm -hmm. so that's why i'm being vague there but i'm hoping (laughs) I'm going to say this on the podcast to give myself a deadline, but I'm hoping to launch this in either late August or September, but I have some work to do behind the scenes to make that happen. So that's why it's not coming right away. And then Andy is going to be hopefully doing some series about 18xx games, which Mm -hmm. honestly is something that the Dice Tower does not have pretty much at all. So honestly, Ambie, I think you're you're adding a lot more value than I am. I'm just adding silliness. (laughs) (laughs) Silliness is great too. Yes. And I'm still going to, yeah. And I'm still going to be on Dice Tower tonight every two Mm -hmm. weeks. Ambie is also potentially toying with the idea of doing a, an art stream where she paints minis, which is a thing that she does. And I, she's, she <laughs> Very says she's occasionally. not. I mean, she says she's not good at it, but honestly, I think she's pretty awesome. So. <laughs> so yeah, so keep an eye out on the Dice Towers YouTube channel. If you aren't subscribed over there and you like seeing our video content, you might want to click that subscribe button and then click that little bell notification. Although I will admit on the Dice Towers YouTube channel, that might be a lot of notifications because they put yeah. out a lot of stuff. <laughs> So maybe just keep an eye out for our pretty smiling faces. Oh, and during that announcement, he also showed our dice buddies for the first time, which if you're a person that just listens to our podcast, that's fine. But oh my gosh, go to our social media channels or uh, go to that live board game breakfast stream and look because we have dice buddies now. We have little dice avatar representations of us and they're the best. (laughs) Crystal's has her puppies. (laughs) <laughs> yes, I have dice doggos and I everybody at the whole convention kept coming up to me and commenting about yeah. the dogs. And it's funny because they're like, oh, wait, I mean, your die is good, too. And I was like, no, 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 don't worry. <laughs> the dogs steal the show and I'm yeah. fine with that. Like, I know it. <laughs> So if you are keeping an eye on the Dice Towers YouTube channel, you will 
already have seen or will be seeing soon a vlog from Ambie and I about our experience at Dice Tower Con. And that will include some of the games we played, but we didn't get to fit in a lot of the stuff we played into that vlog. So we're going to discuss some of those games now. We might actually do a yes. little bit of crossover too, because Ambie and I played a couple of big games together. Mm hmm. One game that is actually big and one game that has something big in the name. <laughs> yes, and they're both in the vlog. Uh, one of them actually, Twilight Imperium 4, takes up a lot of vlogging because that's when we were still fresh and remembering to vlog. <laughs> Wait, what? How is this always a problem for me? I literally, I'm like, I'm going to vlog all the time. And then I don't. And I... <laughs> Yeah, it was. But, it's easier when I'm with you. I feel like if I'm sitting yeah, next yeah. to you, I remember to vlog more. <laughs> yeah, but that was a really fun game. I really enjoyed it. This was my first Twilight Imperium four game. I played Twilight Imperium three like five times before, but the last time was three years ago. Yeah, so it felt similar. The main difference between TI three and TI four is the agenda politics phase, and in TI three, you have these resources and influence on your planets and you use those during voting during the round too so if you use it for voting you can't use it for resources but in ti4 it doesn't do that it has voting as a separate round so you can use it to vote which makes more sense i think thematically yeah it does like <laughs> yeah. the, the amount of influence you have is still the amount of influence yeah. you have like i i having heard it described i'm very glad that i didn't play ti3 <laughs> first uh not that i would have hated it but this seems way better yeah so that was fun. And I was the okay. diplomat turtle space guys. Space turtles. Ik Iksha? Ex 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 I think. Ex I don't know how to pronounce any of the races. The, uh, yeah, so. the, the people from the Space Cats Peace Turtles podcast can chime in online <laughs> okay. and tell us how to pronounce it phonetically. Uh, and then I was the universities of Jolnar. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a six-player game. We were also yes. playing with Sam Healy and Roy Canaday. And then uh, Ambie's husband, Toby, played with us. And uh, the person who won the Jack Vassal Memorial Fund auction for this game, uh, Nick Baker, was playing with us as well. So who won, Ambie? Um, I, I won. Yay! <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it was a really close game. I thought Crystal I had a chance. And Toby. I really, oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought I had a chance. And I don't mind yeah. that I didn't win, but I was like, at a certain point, you kind of get that feeling in the back of your head. You're like, oh. I might win. Like there's a <laughs> yeah. chance that I could win. And you're like trying to figure out how to do it. And then you see all these roadblocks in your way and you're like, no, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. But it was really fun. I was but, two points away from the win. Yeah. You tied for second. So like, I am Blitz, very happy with that. Board Game Blitz like took the lead in that game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Roy likes to think that like he and Sam are like the TI guys, you know, and everything else. No, 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 no. Blitz, Blitz gals <laughs> are where it's at when it comes to Twilight Imperium. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> Hopefully Roy doesn't listen to this and then talk trash on his <laughs> podcast about us. No, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll throw down a TI anytime. No, honestly, Roy and I had a really big alliance in the game. And that was what made a lot of the other people in the game mad. <laughs> like, not actually mad at us. But like, yeah. okay, so Roy was, what was uh, Roy's race? I don't remember. The Hakan. Yes, the Hakan. Trading everything. Yeah, so he was able to feed lots of money to me. And since mm -hmm. I was Jolnar, I was able to give lots of tech to him. So yeah. we literally just kept doing that because it seemed beneficial to both of us. Yeah. So yeah. you two were ahead for the first half of the game. <laughs> and, and the rest of us were like, uh, -huh, we don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I felt a tiny bit bad, but honestly, like, I couldn't. It seemed like the smartest decision for me to make. Yeah. So. <laughs> I do feel guilty sometimes in games, but then I still do the thing. So, yeah. <laughs> but That's it was fun. really fun. And I, I don't know. I like playing big games at cons, but then I also feel like the day we played that game, I didn't get to do much else. So it's weird because even though I enjoy being able to play a really big game, sometimes I feel like it's taking me away from the chance to play lots of smaller games. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I didn't play as many games this con as I typically do. And I really enjoyed the, the experience. So yeah. I think maybe for me, this Dice Tower Con was more about the people. Um, more, yeah, I mean, it's always about the people for me in some degree, but like this one even more so. Like I wasn't stressing to find a game to get into. Like I was honestly kind of just meandering around, talking to people and saying hi to people. And then, oh, you have a game you're starting and you've got a seat in it? Sure, I'll join you. Mm -hmm. Like that kind of was more my, my uh, modus operandi. Is that the right <laughs> way to pronounce that? Something for this con. 
yeah, I also wasn't stressing to play games as much as usual. I was more stressing to find the people that I wanted to play games with, I guess. <laughs> because we have a couple of friends that we met the first time we went to Dysarcon, and so it's like a reunion to see them because that's the only time we see them every year because they live in Florida. So yeah, we, we wanted to spend a lot of time with them and we just happened to be playing games while we're doing that. <laughs> so that was fun. Oh, so back to the big quote unquote big games we played. <laughs> uh, we also got to play the new game from Ryan Lockett. That's a Target exclusive that's coming out soon. I don't think it's released yet, but maybe by now. Not sure. It's called Megaland. And a lot of people are comparing it to Ink and Gold because it is a similar style game in that it's mm -hmm. kind of a simple push your luck game. And I love Ryan Lockett, obviously. Near and Far is number three on my all-time list. I love his artwork. Everything is beautiful. Megaland is also beautiful. That being said, I'd rather play Ink and Gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. But I mean, I don't have the love for Ryan Lockett games that you have. But it, it, was, it was fun. But yeah, Ink and Gold, it seems like something I'd rather play because it adds on too much stuff that I don't care about as much. Yeah, it's not that it's complex, but it just, to me, a push your luck game in a lot of ways sometimes needs to have a way for a person that's way behind to catch up. And in Ink and Gold, you have that because there's a set number of rounds. And in that very last round, if you're in last place, you can do like just crazy stuff to stay in the cave as long as you want and try and get a whole bunch of treasure. In Mega Land, it's not a set number of rounds. It's everyone's trying to get a certain number of coins and whoever gets there first just wins. So yeah. if you see someone that's about to win and you're way behind, there's almost nothing you can do to stop them or to try and catch up. So it's kind of a bummer in that way if you do end up behind. Uh, also, the deck that causes the push your luck mechanism is way smaller than yeah, the one so... in ink and gold. So like there's more chances for you to push your luck and fail. <laughs> yeah, you, there's not as much pushing your luck because you're yeah. going to fail sooner. Yeah, like, you have so to pull out. You, ha you have to fail. <laughs> Which to me yeah. takes some of the fun out of it. If everybody's <laughs> ditching after the first card or the yeah. second card. Uh, again, it's beautiful looking. And it's. I think this is a good family game. Like mm -hmm. I think if you see this one in Target and the price is right, it's not a bad one to pick up. Especially considering ink and gold is hard to come by nowadays. I know they reprinted it as da Diamante in Europe, but that new printing didn't come over to the States at all. So... If you need a push your luck game, this one's not a bad one, but it is not my favorite. So what are some big games you played without me? <laughs> I actually got to play a lot of new games, but I also played an older game that uh, had been on my wish list for a while that I'd just never gotten to try, and that is Las Vegas. I live in Las Vegas. I like Sh Vegas Showdown, which was on my top 100 list, and everyone commented like, oh, I figured you'd like Las Vegas more. And I had to say, maybe, but I've never played it. Uh, spoiler alert, I do. Las Vegas <laughs> is wonderful. I like dice rolling. I knew it had dice in it. I don't know why I didn't play this one sooner. But Dave Luza kindly taught this game to me. And there was a couple who sat down and played with us who were just absolutely lovely. And I am not remembering their names off the top of my head because I'm the worst. But uh, we had a really fun time with it. And now I'm like, oh, man, now I got to buy Las Vegas because I live here and it's a fun <laughs> game. And I liked it. Uh, some of the newer games that I got to try... Um, that I really enjoyed. Uh, I got to try My Little Scythe, Ambi. <laughs> and oh gosh, it's fun. And I will admit, Tom walked by and made fun of us saying like, well, why wouldn't you just play Scythe? And I'm like, because I don't know. I want to play this. It's cute. And there's <laughs> you can raise your friendship levels and have pie fights. And that is wonderful. <laughs> uh, admittedly, I've still never played Scythe. And now that I've played My Little Scythe, I'm actually more interested to play Scythe because... I know it's way more mechanically complex, but assuming that it has the same framework, I think I might actually like Scythe. So uh, speaking of kids games, I played Magic Maze Kids. <laughs> oh, okay. See, I didn't even know they were coming out with a new version of this. Yeah. So it, it is for kids, not one of those games that's fun for adults because it is really easy. You just move your guys to, um, to pick up pieces and then you put them in a pot and then you, once you have all the pieces, you stir it together and then pour it on this frog card and he turns into a prince. Um, Aww. <laughs> but it's really easy for adults because you can also talk to each other. <laughs> so, But I can see how it'd be really cute and fun for kids because of the physical aspect. Of, it's like a toy, right? You, you pick up ingredients and put them in a pot. That's 
all part that's not really part of the game, but like a fun thing outside of it, I guess. But yeah, so that was like a like less than a minute game. And I also played some older games that are new to me. So one was Antiquity, which is a, a couple hour game, I think. But this is a game from Splatter, and it's a civilization building game where you're building cities and expanding. So there's a map in the middle where you have your cities and there's goods to harvest and stuff. And that's where everyone goes. But you also have your own city map. So when you have a city in the map in the middle, it it's represented by a, a board that you have where you put buildings in. So the buildings are little like Tetris pa- shaped pieces and you have to put them on and then you can't move them, which I think is like the one game I've played with these polyomino pieces that actually make sense with the theme that you're building things because you need space in your city for the buildings and you can't move them so that makes sense whereas that other things sense. don't really make as much sense with the theme yeah like <laughs> when you're building a patchwork quilt and you're yeah. like i'm gonna start with this patch over here and <laughs> yeah. now we're gonna build a patch over there like that's not <laughs> how quilts work yeah <laughs> i love patchwork for the record but just, yeah yeah <laughs> But yeah, so that, that was interesting. And then another interesting thing about the game is there's pollution whenever you harvest stuff. And your cities also produce pollution. And there are these little chits that go on the board. So there's a lot of chits to keep track of, which is kind of annoying. But it looked really cool at the end because everyone's producing so much pollution because that's how people are. Because <laughs> so that's just... how people are. <laughs> yeah. So there's pollution everywhere. But yeah, that was a fun game. Antiquity. <laughs> so a couple other games that I got to try. I actually got to try the new... Oregon Trail board game. And I know some of you are like, oh, that card game that's at Target that's really horrible? No, not (laughs) that one. But this one is also going to come out at Target from the same company that produced the horrible card game. Uh, This one is not horrible. It's designed by Daryl Andrews, who you may know from designing games like Sagrada. And it's a board game, not a card game. And it is actually quite fun. Daryl got to teach it to me and a couple other people. And it doesn't come out until Gen Con. So it's not out yet. Uh, But I really enjoyed it. If you liked the Oregon Trail video game as a kid and you were hoping for a board game that actually kind of captured the feel of the video game and wasn't crummy, this is what you were looking for, basically. So that was good. I also got to try a roll and write game that I had heard a lot about from people, but it's only published overseas uh, in Japan and it's called Let's Make a Bus Route. And Mm. so many people had been talking about this game and I had seen it for sale online for people who were willing to like ship it in, but it was like $60. And I was like, I don't know, I don't want to pay $60 for a game that I've never played. And now I've played it and now I kind of want to pay $60 for it because it's (laughs) so fun. It's it's interesting because most roll and write games you're doing things on your own sheet. In Let's Make a Bus Route, you have um, you do have a sheet in front of you that you're marking things off on, but then there's also a community board that is the streets of whatever city it is, and I'm forgetting which city it is now, so I don't want to say wrong. But you're you're everybody has their own different colored marker, and you're drawing your bus route around the city streets. And if you ever go on the same street as another person, you can do that, but there's traffic and you have to have to take a penalty for it. And you're trying to pick up tourists and drop them at tourist locations and pick up commuters and drop them off at bus stops and also a couple other things. But oh my gosh, it was so much fun. And I'm mad that it's so expensive and that (laughs) nobody's published it in the United States. I've heard rumors that the publisher in Japan doesn't want to license it out to someone else. I don't know if that's true, but I hope it's not. I hope that there is an American publisher that's going to be able to grab this game up and publish it over here because it's so much fun and I loved it so much. Yeah, I saw a lot of people with copies of that. So they were selling it at Meeple Source, the one that makes those cool, like fun Meeple oh, upgrade uh-huh. kits. They had brought in some copies of it. And of course, as soon as I played it, I was like, oh, Meeple Source has it? And they're like, no, no, they just sold out. And I'm like, oh, oh darn it. <laughs> Although it was was still probably expensive and I did not have a lot of room in my luggage because of things like unicorn poop. So, (laughs) which I'm not even going to explain the context of. Uh, I basically- It's in the vlog. (laughs) Oh yeah, there you go. It's in the vlog. If you want to know about unicorn poop, it's in the vlog. But yeah, speaking of things that we acquired at the convention, uh, the one game that we bought new is Decrypto. So Toby actually played this without me when I was 
possibly at karaoke night or something. <laughs> but but then he played it. He told me that it's really great and we have to buy it. So we bought it and then we played it more. And it's a word game, a team word game. So in the similar family of code names or crosstalk. Each team has four words and they know their own words, but not the other team's words. And they're giving clues at the same time to their team and the other team. So the other team only sees the clues and then eventually um, they see a lot of clues that match up to the words. So the other team is trying to figure out which clues match with each other and your team knows the words that, where they match. So you want to give clues that match your word, but don't match the other clues that you've already given, which is interesting. It was a game that I didn't really understand until I played it and it was really fun. And we played it like 10 or 11 times at the convention. So I think that was a good purchase for us. <laughs> Yeah, this one is, has been a big hit with my game group in the past few months. Um, although, admittedly, some people in my game group like to cheat when they give clues in this game. For instance, I uh, someone texted me uh, while I was gone. They played it, and you, you're not—you have to give clues that relate to the meaning of the word, mm -hmm. not like pieces of it. Yeah, and like, yeah. as for an example, like somebody I guess gave the clue "penny" when the word was "centaur." And that's not a legal clue because scent is in the word centaur. Oh, okay. but that's, <laughs> I was like, it doesn't I have to do with, the clue. right. So that's the thing. It's it, as you as the other team would never be able to mm -hmm. connect the dots there, and that's why that's not a legal clue. And my game, my my game group loves to cheat at this game, and I, for whatever reason, I'm like the decrypto police. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> that's not allowed. I'm very, I'm horrible. They probably will never play this game with me, but <laughs> I'm just like, uh -huh. that is not allowed. Uh, another older game I got to play is 1830. So I've played this game before a lot, but Mandy from the Dice Tower podcast wanted to learn. And so... Yeah, she uh, had Toby never played I, an 18xx game before, right? Yeah, this was her first 18xx game. So Toby and I, mainly Toby, taught her how to play and we had a good learning game. There was also Troy, who's another person on Twitter who wanted to learn. So it was a four player game and we were teaching two people and they both had a lot of fun. And I think Mandy might talk about it on the Dice Tower podcast because apparently she was raving about the game because multiple people came up to us afterwards saying that Mandy was talking about it. So that's exciting. <laughs> so I mentioned this in the vlog a little bit, but I wanted to mention it here as well. I um, recently, the I had been interested in Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea, which just concluded its second Kickstarter not too long ago for the expansion. And I was thinking, okay, maybe I want to back it, but I've never played it and it's a lot of money. And so uh, Roy Canada, who has been raving about this game, offered to teach it to me. And so I got to play it at Dice Tower Con, and it was a lot of fun. I really liked it. It has a really good 4X experience, but it's a shorter playtime than most 4X games. Roy said about half an hour per player. We were a little bit longer than that when we played it, but we were also chit-chatting a lot and getting stopped <laughs> by people. So it's kind of hard to tell what the actual playtime would have been. But I really liked that. As far as other new stuff, I also got to play a couple of expansions that are new that are coming out soon, uh, including the new one of the new tracks for Downforce, which was fun, and the Broken Covenant standalone expansion for Specter Ops. We didn't actually get to finish a game of that because we got um, somebody had to go run off and do something else, but I got to try that. And I really liked Specter Ops, and I liked Broken Covenant as well. So yeah, new expansions that are pretty cool that I believe are coming out around Gen Con, but I'm not certain mm -hmm. of the street date. Because sometimes stuff releases at Gen Con, but then you can't find it in stores right away, yeah. so it's hard to tell. <laughs> I still have not played Specter Ops. It's been on my want to play list for a while. But I, I, I think you would really like that game, honestly. Yeah, because it's a hidden movement game, right? It is, yeah. and it's my favorite. I've played Theory of Dracula and Letters from Whitechapel, and I feel like there's one other... But yeah, like of the hidden movement games, it's the most streamlined. It's the shortest oh, really? play time. Okay. It's to me the most fun. I like it the most. And I like those other games, but this one to me is my fave hands down. Yeah. So I, I did get to play Letters from Whitechapel, which had also been on my want to play list. And yeah, so I, I actually really like that one. So I had played Fury of Dracula and Hunt for the Ring before, which are both hidden movement games. But Letters from Whitechapel is just the hidden movement part. There's no fighting or anything after you find them which I like because I like the hidden movement part the most. <laughs> so it was just a lot of that. And we, we caught Drac... Or not Dracula. <laughs> we caught Jack, Jack the, the Ripper. Ripper. <laughs> I mean, really, Jack the Ripper, Dracula, they're both bad guys. It's... <laughs> yeah. So that was fun. And then I also got to teach 
a couple of my favorite other roll and write games to some friends. I got to teach some people Gons Show and Clever, which you all have heard me talk about already on the podcast. And I got to teach Danny and Derek Kribbeln. That's K-R-I-B-B-E-L-N. And you can't get that one in the States. You have to get it from Germany. The English name is Color Yam, which doesn't make any (laughs) sense at all. And I keep calling it Color Yarn, which they were laughing at me about. Because when you look at Yam, like with the M, it looks like yarn in the font on the thing. I don't know. It's bad font, but it doesn't even make sense. But it's another roll and write game that's pretty generic. Roll some dice, write some stuff on a sheet, whatever. Uh, But that one's fun because you're competing against the other people in different levels. And whoever gets the highest score in each level gets the most points, and then you move mm. to the next one. So that one's pretty cool. And Danny and Derek uh, from Danny and Derek Do Board Games seemed to like that one a lot. They said that they were wanting to order it. So I enjoyed being able to teach some of my favorite games to other people. And we got to meet so many content creators, <laughs> some of them that we had met before, some of them that we'd never met. And yeah. I, I wish I could name everybody, but it would take eight years. Everyone was the best. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot, Ambi. I know this is in the vlog, but I have to mention here on the podcast that I got to play Atmosphere for the first time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I think you all know by now that I'm basically a weird reincarnate of the Flip the Table podcast in that I really like old, cheesy, obscure board games. And I got to play Atmosphere. Uh, Dan Hughes kindly brought a copy of it over from across the pond. And uh, me, Dave Luza, Brad and Amanda Skaggs, Molly Malcolm, and Robert Geislinger played a six-player game of Atmosphere. We went into like this kind of secret hidden room that Molly had access to since she helps run the convention. And we turned the lights down. Like We actually turned the lights down <laughs> and then played in kind of a dark room. And in, for, if you're not familiar, it's a VCR-based board game where there's a person yelling at you basically the whole game and calling you maggots and making you do things and it's really funny and uh it's in the vlog and i also have a video on my facebook page which you can view even if you're not my facebook friend because it's public um so if you want to see what happened in the atmosphere game go check that out because <laughs> it was one of the best experiences yeah. i've ever had at playing a board game <laughs> yeah and there are also a lot of other non-board gaming things we did that if we talked about it all, it would take hours. But uh, we we had a karaoke night, which was really fun. Karaoke night was amazing. <laughs> yes. I, I kind of organized it thinking, oh, maybe a couple people will be interested. And a lot of people yeah. wanted to come. <laughs> I felt bad because at some point, more people kept coming up to me and being like, oh, can I come? And I was like, I don't know. I'm running out of room in the room. Yeah. And I don't. So it was funny. But I think we fit almost everybody in who wanted to come mm-hmm. that was available. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun. I love karaoke. <laughs> we also had a Blitz listener meetup uh, mm, oh, that, we, yeah. that we did with uh, Epic Gaming Night and Late to the Table and Danny and Derek. And yes. we played Pogs. Yeah. And, and we Strike. We played Strike, <laughs> a lot of Strike. And we played a game called Call of the Wild, which is an indie game where you have to make animal noises <laughs> and try and find your mate of the same animal, (laughs) but sometimes people will be making the noise of the animal that's the predator for you, and so then they can take your card. It's hard to describe, but very (laughs) silly. Uh, Did that end up in the vlog as well? Yeah, some of it's in the vlog, yeah. Perfect, (laughs) then go watch the vlog. I'm just gonna, this whole episode should just be, here's some things, but also go watch the the vlog. (laughs) (laughs) It was a lot of fun. (laughs) The whole convention was great. (laughs) It really was. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there were more games that we played and more things that we did, but unfortunately we're a 30 minute podcast and those, <laughs> those self uh, imposed restraints have now we we're, we're, we got to wrap things up. But if you weren't at this dice tower con, do not feel bad because there are more conventions in the future and mm-hmm. we'll be at some of them, including BGG con, uh, which is happening this fall. And uh, this is, I guess, a formal announcement that Ambie and I are both going to be on the Dice Tower cruise in January. Yay! So if you're going to be on the cruise, you can look for us there as well. And I'm super excited. That will be my second ever cruise. And I'm saying that yeah, now. Me too. I've never been on a cruise before, but I'm going <laughs> on one in September. <laughs> so let's hope I like it. Yeah. Hope you don't get seasick. <laughs> I think I should be fine. I've been on small boats a lot in my life oh, on okay. the ocean and on lakes. And I've never had issues with motion sickness, but I'm going to bring all the stuff for yeah. that just in case. And if you were at Dice Tower Con and we got to see you or say hi to you or play games with you, or we didn't get to see you, 
oh my gosh, you were the best. I like <laughs> everybody we met was so lovely and wonderful. And I could mm -hmm. not even begin to tell you about all the wonderful experiences. A lot of people came up to me and specifically said some very kind things about, you know, us speaking out about inclusion and uh, representation in the board game industry. And I think my friend Kathy saw me melt into a puddle at one point. I was so like, I was almost in tears because, out of happiness because people were just like, they recognize what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And it's, you, you always hope that that will be the case, but it's really, really heartwarming to hear that that is actually the case. So uh, if you came up to us and said, hi, uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, thank you so much. It means a great deal to me and to us. Yeah. And that's it for this week's Board Game Blitz. Visit our website, boardgameblitz.com, for video and blog content, as well as to get links to all our social media pages, including our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Board Game Geek Guild. This episode was sponsored by Gray Fox Games. Make sure to keep an eye on Kickstarter, because the campaign for Run, Fight, or Die Reloaded is coming later this month. Gray Fox Games. Quality games, cleverly crafted. If you're enjoying the podcast and want to show us a little love, you can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. Just head to patreon.com slash boardgameblitz. Our patrons get a lot of benefits, including access to our private Slack channel where you can chat with us directly anytime. Our theme song was composed by Andrew Morrow. Technical support provided by Toby Mao. Board Game Blitz is a proud member of the Dice Tower Network. Check out the other shows in the network by visiting dicetowernetwork.com. Until next time, tell me why the next con is so far away. Tell me why we didn't get to play that game. Tell me why I, I never want to leave. leave place. I want more cons today. Bye everyone. Bye. Hello and welcome to episode 57. Of, I, my hello sounded really weird. <laughs> it's because you're doing it first. Oh, <laughs> because <laughs> uh, I'm still peppy. I don't, I, I still have all that spawn come at the beginning of the recording. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we're starting up new series is ser <laughs> What's the plural? It's just series, right? Yeah, series? I think. Okay. Probably by the time this episode drops a uh, a blog of law for my government. I'm going to start that whole thing over. Just all of it. <clears throat> Where you're you're building cities on your own board, but there's also a, a oops, I just hit the microphone. <laughs> That will not. So in our last episode, we asked you to retheme a mushroom collecting game to be played early in the day by those who will not live forever. So what, what game was that, Andy? That was Mortal Mornings Morals. <laughs> That's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, tongue twister. So for this week, we want you to retheme a board game made by Harmonix for sleepy flying robots. Good luck, everybody.